In this video, we're going to talk about how to factor a very specific type of polynomial. Specifically, we're going to look at factoring a trinomial that happens to be a quadratic, which means it leads off with an x squared term. And this time I did it, well, I did a video earlier where we did almost the same thing, but this time I'm going to open it up to allow any coefficient in front of the x squared, not just 1x squared. So it could be 4x squared or 9x squared or 8x squared or whatever, it doesn't matter. Um, now this is one topic where if you talk to different instructors, different instructors will have a, a different approach to how to factor these type of guys. I have my own personal preference, but it's totally fine if your instructor does it a little bit differently. And in fact, I'm going to make up some videos, even for the ones, even for the method that's not really my personal preference. Uh, I will at least show how to do this other method um, in another video. The method we're going to look at in this video is called trial and error. This is my personal preferred way of factoring these quadratics, but the other method that we'll look at in a later video is called factoring using grouping or uh, the grouping method. But uh, in this video, let's, let's look at trial and error. Basically, the, the idea behind the trial and error approach is, uh, is simply the fact that if we have a quadratic here, we know that if this guy does in fact factor, we know the template of what the answer is going to look like. Because this is going to have to be two linear factors that would foil to give me this guy. And so the F, the O, the I, and the L, the first, the outer, and the inner, and the last, would all have to reduce to give me this quadratic here. So I know some things. For example, I know that the leading terms here and here would have to give me my AX squared. So that's why in step one, I'm going to list the factorizations of AX squared. And there might be a couple of different factorizations, but one of those pairs will be my leading two terms here, assuming this guy really does factor. And then you have the outer and the inner that will combine to give you the BX. And then the last, the L, the last two terms will multiply to give you C right here. So I'm going to list the factorizations of C. And those are possibilities for the last two slots here. The factorizations of A are possibilities for the first two slots. And then you just have to you know, try different options. This is why we call trial and error. Uh, find the right combination that will also allow you to have those terms adding up to BX for the outer and the inner terms. So there is a little bit of guess and check to it or trial and error, but in my experience, this is the fastest way to do this. It sounds like a lot, but it's, it's really not that bad. And you'll find that students in Calc 1 classes or Calc 2 classes, this is typically the way they factor quadratics more often than, than using grouping. Is uh, it's, it's very quick, and a lot of this can even be done in your head when you get really good at it. So let's, let's try an example here. We'll illustrate what we're talking about. So we want to factor 4x squared minus 11x minus 3. I recognize that this is a trinomial that's a quadratic. And so I know that the basic template of my answer is going to be something plus something times something plus something, or possibly minus, but you know what I'm saying. And the first two terms here have to multiply to 4x squared. So let me take 4x squared over here on the side, and we're going to write down what could possibly multiply to 4x squared. Well, we could have a 4x and an x. And, or we could have a 2x and a 2x. Either one of those would give me 4x squared. Now you might say, well Devin, what about 4 times x squared? Technically, yes, those do multiply to give us 4x squared, but whichever one leads off with just a constant term, that's not going to be a polynomial. So we want two polynomials in our factorization. So when I say that, I mean at least 1x here on either side. So it could be either of these, and to be honest with you, I have no idea which it is. So we'll hold on to those for a minute. And then let me also look at the factors for 3. Um, now if you remember from my earlier videos, the way I teach my students is to not be overly concerned with the plus or minus signs towards the end of the problem. Because if you consider them now, for instance, the, the numbers that would multiply to, to give you negative 3, you would have a longer set because you'd have to include a positive times a negative, 
but then also a negative times a positive of the exact same numbers. So let's just not worry about negatives until closer to the end. The pluses and minuses are extremely important. I'm not saying that. I'm saying let's just wait to the end before we talk about those. The only way to get three would be a one times three, or technically you could also have three times one. Now earlier we never had to do this. We didn't actually have to write them in two separate orders, but now we do, and I'll tell you why. If we lead off our first terms with like a 4x and an x, putting a 1 and a 3 and foiling that would be very different than having a 3 and a 1. So we actually have to list these as actually different uh, options because they will foil different ways. Okay, so you can either write it twice or if you can just remember that you're gonna to need to try it both ways, you don't even need to write it twice, but just remember you're gonna to have to try the one and the three uh, in both places. So let's give this a shot here. So um, these are my options for the first two places and these are my options for the second two places. So I'll try a one and a three, and then if that doesn't work, then we'll try a three and a one. So here we go. Uh, what do the signs need to be in order for this to possibly work out? To multiply to give us a negative 3, it'll either need to be a minus and a plus or a plus and a minus. Let's check this way first. 4x times x would give me 4x squared. The outer would give me 12x. The inner would give me minus x, which makes plus 11x. Whoops, that doesn't work, so I'm gonna scrap that. That was, that was the wrong idea, that doesn't work. So I'll tell you what, let's, um, let's keep the uh, one and the three, and we'll change this to a plus and a minus. Let's try it again. The product is still negative three. Four x times x would give me four x squared. Four x times negative three is negative 12 x, and uh, one times x is x negative 12x and x make negative 11x, and one times negative three is negative three. We found it, awesome. So I'm gonna box this in, and we just factored this large polynomial here. I'll be honest with you, we got a little fortunate. Uh, we found it earlier rather than later. If that didn't work out, then we would have uh, basically just had to try not only one and three, but three and one. And if that didn't work either, then we would have scrapped the whole idea of having 4x and x and tried everything again with 2x and 2x. So you can never tell. Sometimes you get lucky and you find the factorization a little earlier. Sometimes it might be the last possible option that you try to give you the factorization. And sometimes it doesn't even factor at all and it's called a prime polynomial. But in any case, this is what, what we do when we have a trinomial that has this a quadratic function with a leading coefficient with something other than one.